this is a little different here. Tony Pajama's actually going Mewtwo. I Ooh. think. Wow, oh, see, man, Tony has a lot of characters. I'm actually really impressed. I mean, and, uh, did... in inter interesting secondaries too that I wouldn't expect him to have as an SME. No, not at all. I was gonna like. I think we talked about earlier starts like having multiple counterfeits in this game can definitely work. There are like essentially 80 plus matchups in Ultimate. And if there's something that you feel you're not good at as, as a character, even as a specialist, it doesn't hurt to have a secondary or a pocket that can help you out in some matches you're just not either comfortable with or you feel you can do better with the character. Um, yeah, me too. I can... I, I know the projectile is really good. Oh, rough. It, it's like the same situation with Emo Lord. Like, get caught charging or shooting a projectile at a bad time, the minecart's right there in your face already. Yeah, but, uh, even even that's the worst part too is like the end lag and the startup frames. You're eating up a lot in that time, like you said. Minecraft will just be around you. Yeah, um, you guys have a great projectile to do with Steve, and he's also using that uh, confusion to see if you can get like some reflective properties as well. But uh, yeah, it's gonna take a little bit more. E2 is super big and super light, so he's gonna get eaten up <laughs> by uh, Steve pretty bad, as you can see already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's up to Tony though getting the forward air. Look at ah, that's what I'm liking here is that Tony's slowly adapting against the minecart and he's not looking to punish Steve for using minecart, he's looking to punish Steve after minecart. And look in the way that a minecart just essentially will no longer have that threshold after a while. You can't just punish Steve for just effectively committing it all the way. But Ooh. what a combo, man! Yeah, so so dirty there. He almost got the force smash read at the ledge too. I'm pretty sure Mitsu would have died to that. He got the diamond. Oh, and no. he just, just scooped into it. Tony with a very poorly spaced forward air, right. jumping right into that up smash. And you already know Mitsu's big and light. He's, he's already super dead to that. Yeah, being having a huge hurtbox and just being lightweight like you are in Mewtwo, yeah, you're just gonna not live any longer after that one. Man, I am so sorry. Like, the crazy thing about it, too, is like normally in a normal setting, Tony Pajamas would be in the right. You want to go for forward air because it has like that low hitbox, right? And you're able to hit your opponent out from the ledge. The problem here is that when you're facing against Jake, but not only just Jake, Steve, a character that if you happen to be above him, you have to worry about things like up tilt, up air, up smash. And those are some moves that are just very, very strong against you, especially as anti airs. And especially, like you said, right? You're already big. You're super light. You will die at those higher percents. But Tony Pajama is going to hold the cards, man. And he says, cool, let me pull the best one in the deck out there. And of course, that is going to be Tony Pajama's next. And I'm curious yes. to see if he's. I, I for sure can tell you he's watched Best Ness play this matchup. And hopefully, he's learned a thing or two about how to handle it, too. Because we know Best Ness has been struggling. And we'll see if Tony Pajamas has got the matchup down a little bit. Yeah. In a, in another aspect of that as well, it's not Best Ness, it's, Ness, it's a different player, but uh, exactly. Jake has been beating uh, Best Ness in this matchup, so he is familiar with how to play around this character. So, uh, Tony, I would, I would like to see what he does here to take this one. So far, so good, though. Like, using those great hitboxes of Ness to catch Steve in the air out of the minecart. But, oh my goodness, gets caught kind of autopiling with that side magnet spacing, trying to get Steve in the back, and it falls right into the anvil. And uh, this is where things get rough, because Steve can snowball so quickly. <laughs> Once yeah. you drop that first dock and you're just forced to approach, you get with punished by that up tilt, suddenly you're at 57. Uh, Steve also having the diamond in play as well here. Uh, Tony, oh, he's, he's getting, he's getting ran over, literally. Yeah, oh, just that's, see, that's, right that's the thing too, is like the way that Tony is trying to just come back on the stage, Jake has an answer for every single situation. This kind of goes to show that, yeah, this is a different Ness, but Tony has, Tony understands the matchup against Ness as a whole, not as the player. And it's up to Tony Pajamas to figure out if I can do this matchup as a player, not a Ness main here. We'll see. Uh, being a player and, a, and using Ness are two different things entirely when you start to think about it. Right? Yeah. How, how you personally handle it, how you look for your opponent's habits, right? Yeah. That's exactly what Tony needs in this type of situation. Already down so much. Seeing Jake just getting all the mats he needs. Back, forward air into the back air. The diamond's still so potent right now. Oh, oh and no, in the end line. Easy, easy minecart with punish. Seeing that laggy PK fire just runs right over that board nest. And uh, Jake, honestly, pretty dominant duo. Uh, the Mewtwo match was kind of a wash.